Good morning ladies and gents. Welcome to the channel. Um, let's just make sure things are working. Yep, everything seems to be working. So morning ladies and gents, welcome to the channel. A nice little Saturday live stream. I was hoping to do VFR today, but um, it looks like it's become a bit of an IFR uh, situation with the weather down in Jersey. So, <coughs> excuse me. You can also hear that I have a bit of a uh, cold going on, so uh, my voice isn't going to be as strong as it normally is, but we'll see what we can do. Let's just... Why can I not scroll? Oh, there we go. It's just like, why couldn't I scroll up and down on my thing? Good morning, Darren. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you in the house. Uh, we've got Vatsim set up. We're on the ground at Jersey. And we've got ourselves an aircraft coming in. That's a, I mean, I think that's a turboprop. Or well, that's a, that's a, yeah, um, SF50, whatever that is. An SF50. Let me just Google what an SF50 is. Um, SF50 aircraft. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Oh, that's that's weird. Okay, that makes complete sense to me why Vatsim can't model match that because that's I've never like seen one of those in the sim in my life. So it makes sense that that's a default A321, but I'm afraid that's just the way Vatsim is. Um, so uh, because it's an IFR situation, uh, we might be having an IFR departure out of Jersey, and then um, hoping that in Cardiff on our landing. We will uh, have more of a VFR situation because I'd like to practice VFR. It's been a while since I've done VFR stuff, but we'll see. Um, but of course, uh, I think that's that's all done there. That's fine. That is very strange to always see one of those sorts of situations. So we have uh, Jersey Approach online. We did have Tower a moment ago, but the Tower's gone offline, unfortunately. Oh, and we've got some uh, EasyJet departures. That's fun. Okay, let's file my flight plan before I do anything else. Uh, EGJJ to EGHPF, um, PF is it? FF, EGFF. Uh, departure time we're going to have uh, is uh, 11, 1100 Zulu. En route time, um, I've not really worked this out yet, but let's let's pop over to plan G and work out my route at this point. Um, feel free to say hello in the chat. Hello, Perriot, good to see you in the chat. Of course, uh, I was talking to you earlier on on Discord, so good to see you. Hope your mid-air refueling goes well. Uh, that's always fun practicing that. It uh, can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Uh, right, so start flight plan from there. And uh, let's say outbound to uh, crossing over the Guernsey VOR, and then let's go uh, Berry Head. Um, and then from Berry Head, we'll jog up to uh, EGPF uh, direct. And I'll show you how we're going to do that with the uh, radials um, in route. So. Let's just go back, reconnect. Let's just make sure that's connected and we can zoom in and see what's going on. We've got a three knot crosswind roughly from uh, 050. Um, oh, and he's going to, oh yeah, right, okay, because he's GA, he's basically going to come up and probably sit on top of me. Uh, but what did Plan G say? Plan G said about an hour and 15 minutes, uh, which is a, roughly correct. I'm going to just plug that in there and I'm going to say I have uh, two hours of fuel. Uh, cruising speed is about 110, and cruising altitude, I'm going to say uh, 8,000 feet. Um, for the route, we're going to go uh, EGJJ. I, I sometimes put the, the ICAO codes of the airport in, in and out, uh, and... Whoever the controller is can just look at that and go, oh, okay, I see what he's trying to do. Guernsey. Look at that. He sees that's accurate, though. He's, he's, 
He's travelling along on the uh on the roughly on the center line there, I give him that much. Uh BHD, BHD, and then of course Cardiff, which is E G F F. Um happy to accept a star. Um File flight plan. <coughs> right. Hey, Jurors, good to see you. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you. And Marvin, that's uh, one strange T6 you got there. I'm. I know. I'm sorry. I've. Uh, I've got to change the. I forgot to change the. Uh, the chat. I originally was thinking of going T6, but then when I saw the weather, I thought it's going to be a big hassle trying to do T6 IFR all the way up to Cardiff from here. So I changed the 172. So I, po I apologize about that, guys. Um, yeah, I was going to do T6 if the de if the weather was nice. It's uh, pretty low visibility up here in Inverness as well. It's raining. We had excellent, excellent summer weather this week uh, at work. My goodness. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, we've had excellent, excellent summer weather. Very hot sun. I've, I've got my first tan of the season. And now it's the weekend, and it's drizzling. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's jump in the aircraft. Oh, we've got ourselves a bit of... Um, it would be nice to fly through some rain in the sim to see the uh, the rain physics on the windshield, but, uh, but there we go. Okay, so let's do a... Um, See, it's it was not too long ago that I flew this aircraft aloft, so I'm not expecting too much of an issue. Uh, what is the outside air temperature does just before we start up, just to get an idea of what's going on? Uh, outside air temperature is 12 Celsius, so that's fine. Um, so let's go. Uh, upon entering cabin, airplane weight and balance checked. Uh, let's do that check now. Um, so we've got about half a tank on either side, which is fine. Let's take Heidi with us, and let's take um, let's take a handbag. Let's give that five kilos. It's still quite light. It's still, it's still quite heavy for a handbag. What I thought about about four kilos for a handbag, a dainty handbag at that. Uh, right. So let's then go. Park brake uh, set. Park brake is set. Control wheel lock. Uh, removed. Uh, that is done indeed. Uh, oh, no, now it is. Master switch on. Check fuel quantity. Fuel quantity has been checked. Um, static pressure out source valve is off, which it is. Pull to be on, push to be off. Mas uh, uh, enunciator panel test switch. All of them are flashing and the relevant ones are remaining afterwards. Fuel selector tank, uh, fuel selector is on both. Fuel shutoff valve, push, um, yeah, so uh, push to be full in, like so. Uh, wing flaps extended. And then master switch off and then Elevator trim set for takeoff. Uh, one thing, one extra step I will do before I do the walk around um, is I will turn on the pitot heat because I oh oh crap no not that one I'll turn on the pitot heat because that step is always missed on the upon entering cabin checklist and then once you go to the walk around um, so that's it goes straight to the engine start so if I keep that on um, upon entering cabin. That's pretty much ready. Trim is set for takeoff. Let's go to the second page there. And then let's go to the actual cabin walk around. So the pitot heat is on. Uh, the pitot tube has been warming up in the last few moments. Let's just give it a, a little bit longer. And then we'll turn the electrics off and then do a walk around. Um, 
Marvin, nice weather didn't stop me. Uh, nice weather didn't stop me from almost crashing into the mountain at Innsbruck yesterday. Oh dear, <sighs> that's always fun. That that always gives me a little bit. It, sh it gives me a bit of a shake every time I come into Innsbruck. Um, okay, so let's say that should be enough for the pito heat. Let's turn that off, and then turn that off. Let's go straight out and start our walk around. Wiggle the flap. There is a bit of wiggle going on there, but. It's, linkages all look good, so we don't shouldn't have a problem. All those linkages look fine as well. Uh, let's remove the these. Yeah, I already moved removed that. So um, uh, yes, that's been removed. Um, sump the fuel tanks. That should be fine. Yep. Yeah. Let's check the uh, fuel is again fine. Um, I'm going the other way around. I usually go. Uh, and uh, check that that is all clear. Check the prop looks good. That should be fine. I've never actually had, I think maybe once in my entire simming career, if you want to call it, I have had um, a, de a dented prop, and I have seen what that looks like. Uh, oil is a little bit uh, low from the full mark, but I'm going to actually just let the oil run um, until it gives me an issue. I'm, I'm used to, like, replacing the oil all the time, and I feel like I should probably experience the oil in a less than perfect state once in a while so those connections look good coming around the other right hand side wiggling the flap flap and thankfully at least the flap has roughly the same amount of wiggle that than the left flap has so at least they're symmetrical in that regard excuse me and uh just coming around having a look at these linkages all looking good give the trim tab a bit of a wiggle that should be fine and just locking uh, Heidi's handbag to make sure there's no one. Let's just uh, remove that. And yes, the pito heat works. And back into the cabin. So there is the walk around. Let's just bring back. And now we can then fully start on the engine start checklist um, as we like. <clears throat> but what we're going to do first is we're just going to start up the electrics, uh, connect with ATC, and then ask for permission to do an engine start. So we're going to try and do this properly this time. Uh, so, oh, we do have tower back. Excellent. Fantastic. That's good to see. So if I just refresh that, yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't, hasn't really, hasn't really jersey. The tower doesn't look on Vatson, but I can see the tower frequency there. Let's just go to the ATIS first. Um, that's uh, 134.67. So let's turn on our battery and our avionics. Let's fire up the avionics and uh, quickly tune over to uh, that's 134.67. And that, has, that was happening to me the other day in What, what aircraft was that happening to me the other day? It was continually beeping at me. Um, right, let's go. Uh, 134, 6, 7, enter. And then flip that up and listen in on that. Okay, so we have Yankee, Q&H, uh, well, that's uh, Ultimeter 2971, but let's convert that to the Q&H, which is Q&H 1006. You can see that little conversion there. Um, <clears throat> runway 08, Q&H 1006, uh, information Yankee is current aircraft type Cessna 172. Uh, I've plugged in the... Um, the flight plan. If I just look at the start, the the SIDS, um, there's actually not a 
There's not a, a Sid that has the jersey. Oh, there's a, there's the jersey. Oh, they could they could give me the uh, Os, Osta to Bravo. Let's see, they could give me. They could give me the scary three alpha. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, right. Let's not um, waste any time getting uh, clearance to start the engine because our battery is bleeding. So uh, one nineteen four five. One nineteen four five. And it comes up as uh, Jersey Tower. So let's just make sure I can hear him properly. <laughs> Excuse my voice, guys. It uh, it is is a bit rough today. Easy four three kilo ground up left tackle from Lazio. Wait, surface winds are zero three zero four knots. Oh, well, there you go. At least I know I can hear him. Wait. Wait, if he's taking off... Oh, he's taking off that end. Oh, lovely. Let's zoom in and have a look at that. There's the EasyJet taking off. Lovely. Thank you, uh, Vatsim, for model matching correctly for once. Um, and I'm just going to contact Tower. So... A Jersey Tower, good morning. Golf, Alpha, Zulu, uniform, mic, radio check. Excellent. Right. Uh, Jersey Town, thanks for that. Uh, Golf Alpha Zulu Uniform Mike. Uh, requesting IFR clearance as filed with information Yankee QNH 1006 aircraft type Cessna 172. Uh, Golf Alpha Zulu Uniform Mike, stand back. Okay, let's just watch that too. I've got two easy jets going out at the same time here. There's rotation coming up soon. Boom, there's rotation. Beautiful. Traffic. Um, he seems like he was a tad heavy if he had to take the whole runway, but whatever. There's three of them. Uh, golf uniform, Mike, have you got Uh, go ahead. Uh, golf uniform, Mike, uh, clear to Cardi Fast File. Rumors your way in use. And uh, swap 1203. Clear to destination as filed, uh, runway 08, squawk 1203, and, uh, just for your information, if you would prefer, we are able to use the Scary 3 Alpha SID, uh, if that works for you. I'm just going to check that. Yes, yeah, Scary 3 Alpha, that would be fine uh, for you, sir. Go for you, for Mike. Okay, thanks for that. Scary 3 Alpha it is for uh, Golf uh, Uniform Mike. Excellent. Easy for three kilo bravo. Contact now. Jersey control one two five decimal two. Good morning. A uh, golf a uh, uniform mic just requesting an engine start. Uh, start approved, we'll call for taxi, QNH1006, Golf Uniform Mike, thanks. Okay, we've got our start clearance, and then we will call back for taxi when appropriate. Things are going smoothly, which very rarely happens, so I'm happy. Okay, throttle cracked, mixture, idle, master switch on, beacon, Beacon is on. Uh, skip to step 9 if the engine is warm. It is not, so let's go. Mixture rich until... Um, so auxiliary pump on, and then mixture rich until stable fuel flow for 3 to 5 seconds. Uh, so the fuel pump is going on, and we're watching the... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Fuel flow is just right there. So let's just zoom in there for you guys. Um, right there. There you go, that should be enough. 
Uh, auxiliary fuel pump off. Propeller area clear. Let's just look left and right and shout clear out the window. That's what you would do in real life at least. And then ignition start and mixture advance. Oh, well, let's keep the mixture to... Uh, yeah, then set to idle cutoff. I didn't do that in that step, but we have the mixture at idle cutoff, and then as the engine begins, we then advance that to um, ignition mixture advance. Oh, let's try that again. There we go. It's very rare, actually, I get get an engine started. Um, once we, you know, within the the first ten seconds of trying, so that's uh, that's a good thing. Okay, now that I've got the engine on, I'm going to pop in my. Ooh, ooh, there's a little bug. Hello, A2A. Hello, A2A. There's a there's a a wee bug going on there. Interesting. That's juicy. Um, so, oil pressure. Check the oil pressure. Bum, ba, da, ba, ba. Oil pressure is in the green. That's what we like to see. Navigation lights as required. Let's pop the nav lights on now. Avionics are on. They're on. Oh, we should have actually turned the avionics off technically while turning the engine on because you could get an electric surge and blow some circuits. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's a deal. I probably should have done that, but never mind. Radios are on. Flaps retract those those bad boys up. Okay, we all doing okay in the chat? Eleven people on the stream. Good to see. Um, let's uh, plan our um, departure. Uh, to do that, you go to procedure and go departure, and then from EGJJ we want to go uh, the scary three alpha, which you go down in the list here. Um, and there is Scary 3 Alpha. And runway, you want to be... Oh, that's only 2.6, actually. Oh. Okay, we're going to go Scary 2 Bravo. Uh, because that's 0.8. Uh, Jersey Tower Golf Uniform Mike uh, just requesting a uh, SID change to Scary Two Bravo because uh, the Scary Three br Three Alpha is uh, run w the other runway. Uh, golf Uniform Mike, yeah, that's it. I will just check that, and uh, yes, it's not correct. It's fine. Okay, thanks. That's Scary Two Bravo then for uh, Golf Uniform Mike. Excellent. Uh, low departure. Cool. So he's he said that's okay. That's fine. Uh, so runways. Yep. Yep. So that's fine. So from scary, we're now going to basically go. Uh, that misses out the the. Uh, that's the scary. There's the scary uh, waypoint. Straight from there is uh, BHD. So then we add uh, BHD like so, and then from BHD we basically just go uh, EGFF, and then by the time we get to Cardiff. ATC will con conduct us from there on. So that is basically the way life is going. Um, yeah, so we're going to take off from left to right and then fly outbound to one, uh, 1,800 feet and then turn left onto our, our course. So that's all good. Um, that's all set. One last thing we need to do is we need to set our squawk, which is 1203 which is 1203, uh, and set to alt on alt, like so. And uh, from there on, we're good to go, as far as I know. Uh, it's always a bit scary to have everything set up correctly and be like, um, should I actually, like, am I actually good to go now? Um, but we'll, we'll be fine. Um, so the, let's just go to the taxi checklist. The runway heading is 083. So let's set our heading bug as uh, 083 to begin with, and that will give us a runway heading. And at the same time, let's uh, select um, let's select 5,000 on the autopilot just to begin with. Um, 
we'll we'll work with that later on. And uh, <clears throat> let's just get my feet on the rudder pedals. Let's bring in track IR now. Take a sip of tea and uh, look glamorous for the camera. Uh, uh, things are going well. Things are going well. Okay, headphones. Let's just double check wheel chocks, tie downs, uh, nav. Let's turn on the taxi light. And uh, the engine start checklist has been done. The before takeoff checklist is next. Uh, so let's just close up our windows. And uh, cabin is cool and steady. Let's just bring in a little bit of heat into the cabin, like so. <laughs> Uh, let's also bring up the, uh, he's going to give us, if we are able to have, he's, we're over here on the uh, GA, GA stand, he's going to give us Alpha, Alpha to and Bravo to Bravo 1, so. Jersey Tower Golf Uniform Mike, ready for taxi. Jersey Golf Uniform Mike, taxi, holding point Delta room, where's your wait for Alpha, Bravo and Delta. A taxi holding point Delta via Alpha Bravo Delta, uh, Golf Uniform Mike. Okay, so he's not given us the full length, of course we don't need it, so we're going to go Alpha, uh, Bravo, and then Delta. So uh, let's just off, uh, bring off the brakes and lean the mixture for ground operations. Uh, there's a there's a an aircraft taxiing there, or taking off, sorry. There's the, uh, the third easy jet. Let's just watch him on the way out, and there he goes, and wheels up already. He's 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 a eager beaver, eager beaver. My goodness! And there's my TCAS working. You can see the uh, the amber or the yellow alert, which is the cautionary warning. And down on the TCAS radar below on the uh, GTN 650, you can see I have that selected as well. So let's just bring the RPM down to about 900 uh, for for ground taxiing. Just give an external check to make sure everything uh, everything looks hunky-dory. I'm very happy. Um, very happy. This is lovely. Very happy. Hunky-dory. As they say. So that's uh, Alpha, Bravo, and then Delta is where we're going to. Um... I was testing the GTN 750 recently with the uh, the avionics. Why am I? I'm, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a, a left-hand yaw, but I think that's probably the wind acting on my uh, my tail surfaces. Um, let me just cough here for a second because my throat is. Uh... Yeah, There we go. So coming up uh, past Alpha 3. And I love it when uh, when Vatsim and everything just works. Uh, hey, your shaders look great. Uh, do you mind sharing? Um, yeah, I'm basically just uh, running uh, P3D version 4.5 with the PTA shader pack. And I'm using the Matt Davis default shader pack that the, the, the Matt Davis default file that comes with... Uh, PTA. I wonder, I, I'm not sure that we've needed a PTA upgrade going from 4.4 .4 to 4.5. Um, I think I probably would have heard about that. Maybe I have to, I should research that, but I'm still running. I'm pretty sure I'm still running the, oh, well, actually, I can't remember now if I upgraded PTA for, for 4.5. Uh, I'll have to double check, but um, we should be okay. Okay, so there is uh, Echo, and we're going to continue around, like so, and uh, taxiing about uh, ground speed 11 knots in taxiing, so that's fine. It is a little bit swift for a, for a 172 actually, so we'll just we'll just bring it down, just tap the brakes a little bit, bring that down again.
Velata Sim. Um, that name rings a bell. Name definitely rings a bell. Um, let's just turn the navigation system over to GPS so that it should start tracking the, the GTN 750 uh, after takeoff and, and, uh, and going over to automatic flight with the autopilot. Okay, there's my turn on to Bravo, just here. And then uh, Delta should be the next right-hand turn. So <clears throat> let's set ourselves 10, notch, uh, for 10, 10 degrees of flaps. And let's just double check our checklist. Before takeoff, seatbelts and doors checked and secured. Flight controls free and correct. Flight instruments have been checked and set. Fuel quantity, let's double check. Yep, we're still good on. Clear for takeoff runway 08, surface wind 020 4 Clear for takeoff runway 08. I'm uh, just going to do a quick uh, instrument check uh, at Delta before rolling onto the active, but thanks for that. Um, cool. Excellent, thanks. Okay, uh, mixture, let's uh, richen that bad boy up. Uh, fuel selector, recheck, that's on both, that is rechecked. Throttle, 1800 RPM, let's do a mag check. Let's bring that up to 1800, roughly. Uh, mags on... Okay, a little bit jumpy, but nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, throttle, throttle idle, and then a thousand RPM. I didn't want to idle out too bad. Okay, radio set and lights. Uh, let's go. Uh, the landing light as we're going on, and the strobe as we're going to cross the active very soon. And uh, we don't really need pitot heat at the moment, but we should be fine. Wing flaps are set to ten degrees. Okay, we're crossing the active now. As he's given us clearance, and uh, he said that there's no other aircraft. In the area. Hello, Air Borniac. Good to see you. Just crossing the active at, at Jersey, getting ready for departure. Uh, so take off. Wings flaps. Uh, fl wing flaps are set to 10 degrees. Mixture is rich. Correct. Lean in. Uh, lean after three 3,000 for max RPM, uh, and then throttle slowly advance to full. Uh, lightly lift nose and wheels at uh, 55 knots. So 55 knots is our rotation speed, and uh, very nice. Very nice. Coming onto the runway. Nice and smooth. Let's just make sure we have center line, and uh, and then we'll hit hit the beans. Okay, smoothly advance the throttle, and just maintain uh, maintain center line with the uh, rudder. Just give me a little bit of nose down pitch to keep the nose on the ground, and then 55 knots and the nose off the ground, and then we will just maintain attitude until. We build the speed roughly up to 80, and then we'll raise the flaps. Excellent. There's 80. Let's raise the flaps now. And the aircraft nose will kind of settle down a little bit, and we can begin our gradual climb at uh, roughly 80 knots indicated, maybe slightly above that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a forgiving chap. I don't mind flying exactly by the numbers. Don't have to do that all the time. We're actually quite close to 80 knots in the climb. That's fine. Let's just trim a little bit so that I can take my hand off the... Let's just nose down a little bit and just maintain some trim. There's a 1,000 feet. He's going to hand us over to approach fairly soon, but I want to get on autopilot before he does that. There's autopilot. And there's heading. And there's arm, arm at seven seven hundred feet per minute. Okay, he's going to give us approach very soon, which is one twenty five two. Uh, one twenty five two. We've got you from my contact now. Jersey Control one two five decimal two. Good morning. Over to Jersey Control one two five decimal two. Thanks for ATC uh, Golf Uniform Mike. Okay, I'm going to start that. That's eight. That's seven, sixteen, seventeen hundred. Uh, Jersey Control, Golf Alpha, Zulu, Uniform Mike, just uh, in the departure, uh, climbing through eighteen hundred feet.
Go Fox is serving you from Mike Jersey Control. Good morning at Recycle Squawk 1203. Hopefully that's worked. Looking for Mike Jack Squawk one two zero three. Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. Nope. Uh, so Jersey Pro Jersey Control. Yes, I've got uh, one two zero three, and I've got it on uh, Alt, and I've uh, identified, but I can't see. Uh, if I have an issue, I'll, I'll set it to on. Maybe that should work now. KM175 to Jersey Approach, good morning. KM175, Jersey Control, good morning. Um, Loving Romeo 08, uh, standby, it'll be the um, uh, standby for the arrival. Arrival on row 08 and send by for the arrival KLM 175. Maybe it's the 650 that needs to be set uh, as well. Looking from Mike, uh, at plant level zero. Ah, oh, there you go. Got your score up now. Zero. Uh, say again the altitude uh, for Golf Uniform Mike. Golf Uniform Mike, Golf Uniform Mike, climb flight level 80. Uh, climb up flight level 8-0 for Golf Uniform Mike, thanks. Okay. And since he's given us um, an actual... 7 descend to altitude 3,000 feet, QNH 1006. Ascent 3,000 feet, 1006, Since he's given us a flight level, we want to tune uh, QNH1013, which is a standard barometric pressure, so that we uh, get an accurate flight level. And uh, oh, beautiful, Mike. Flying heading three three zero degrees. Heading three three zero degrees. Thanks, uh, Golf Uniform Mike. Yeah, this isn't capturing properly. Oh, duh! It's because I had it on heading. Yeah. One seven five. Uh, when ready, descend flight level one hundred. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> it's working now. Descending to flight level one hundred. Ah, oh, coming up above the cloud cover now, aren't we? Uh, climb and the en route climb. Airspeed between seventy to eighty five. Throttle full open, mixture rich, and lean above three k. So I'm going to lean now to about seventy five percent on the mixture. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the GTN's ident works with in Vatsim. Well, yeah, he's given me climbed up to uh, eight zero, and I don't need five thousand feet there, so that should be fine. So now we can take the landing light and the taxi light uh, lights off, and let's bring the pizza heat on as well, because we're down. We're, we're getting low now on the um, the temperatures, uh, coming up through six thousand feet. Continuing our climb, let's just pop that down. Uh, I think we will get through the clouds. Hello.
when I click once. That's weird. Anyway. Everything seems to be working correctly. Which I'm really really happy about. This is this is a good stream. It's gonna be good. Two degrees Celsius now. Speed is good, climb rate is good, altitude is good, heading and track is all good. Seven knots from the side. Let's just zoom in there on the 750 and have a look. Yeah, okay, so that's just dog legs us over there. And we've got ourselves some traffic uh, up ahead, you can see. But uh, he is currently 200 feet above us uh, and descending. He's probably coming into Jersey. Let's have a look what he is doing on Vatsim. There's me and that. D DH6, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a Twin Otter. I think that's a Twin Otter coming into Brit... Um, well... Hmm. And we have London South Control on one 132.6. Uh, there's 1,000 feet to go. Um, yeah, we're still not above the clouds, really, actually. Uh, yeah, then one seven five vectoring for the INS one zero eight. Uh, ten, uh, uh, flight heading one eight zero degrees. It's flattened out our, our ascent rate to five hundred feet. Expecting the INS one zero eight are entering. Uh, I would have expected to see KLM on my uh, off to my right hand side. In this area, on TCAS, I it may be yeah. I think it's one of those things. Well, no, you can I can see, I can still see. Seven one five proper descend to altitude four thousand feet. QNH one zero zero six. Is that him? There's two two D D C X sixes. D C sixes. It's lovely to see some summertime scenery. Yeah, so we are above above the cloud cover now, and we we will stay above the cloud cover until. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh come on! Yeah, there we go. Give me my FPS back. Okay, so now we are at cruise. Let's just go cruise power, two thousand two thousand four hundred RPM. So that's about 2400 RPM. And because it's a fixed pitch propeller, um, we have no RPM to actually. Just. Uh, Doing some leaning of the mixture there. There we go. So that's the cruise checklist done. 
Uh, da -da. Nav, strobe, and beacon is on. Pito heat's on, because we're at zero degrees Celsius. That's all good. Oh, there he is now. See him behind me off my... Yeah, there he is. Yeah. I just move, zoom out to 24 nautical miles on the, the display there. So, on the GTN 750, you've got a dotted arrow line there, which I'm, I'm hoping, which I'm hoping it will follow automatically. But because it's not a solid line, I, I might have to manually take us in a heading mode to bring us over to the next line there. We'll see. So there's the SID that we've been flying. Yeah, so this changeover will take us all the way into Scary. And Guern Guernsey is going to be under that cloud just there. C-172 not suitable for icing conditions. Right, um, so icing conditions. I have been in a C-172 in icing conditions in real life. Yeah, it's turning automatically, so that's nice. Um, I've been in icing conditions before. Not severe, severe icing conditions. Let's just turn off track R now we're in cruise. Um, oh, come on now. Let's not do this. Um, Oh, it is going to do this. How do I turn this off? I had this problem the other day. Copy from Mike Resume on Navigation, Direct Berry Head, Bravo Hotel Delta. Resume on Navigation, Direct Berry Head for uh, Bravo, uh, sorry, Golf Uniform Mike. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, I'm 175, speed 220 knots or less, uh, unit number 2 for arrival. I heard speed 220 knots and then I lost the rest. Okay, I'm 175, unit number 2 for arrival. Number 2 for arrival, sorry about that. Okay, I'm 175. You see that beeping would come, I imagine, if one of these was selected. You would hear the, the beeping of an ADF or a localizer or something, the, the ident of, of that. But as to why that's happening, when I... Turn left heading one two zero degrees. We're closing for left code ILS approach one way zero eight. Descend to altitude two thousand feet. Left heading one two zero clear for Nervous approach uh, one way zero eight to two thousand feet. Seven way zero eight. Okay, then one seven five. Descend to altitude four thousand feet. 
I'm coming to you after you four thousand feet. Tell them once and for Seven five turn right heading two six five downwind and uh, speed one eight zero knots or less. Heading two six zero five uh, and one eight zero knots. Yeah. Try the GTN 650. Yeah, I'm swapping out those over. Um. Could be marker volume. Yeah, I. Yeah, that's right. That's what it is. And uh, nav two. Um, I can't remember how exactly to to tune nav to. Oh no. Seven zero two purple. After departure, be scary Bravo. And uh, climbing to altitude 5,000 feet. See, com frequency uh, slash push nav 2. So to get nav 2, it says. 702 contact tower frequency 119 decimal 450. Speak to you later. 119 decimal 450, and I look forward to it. 702 happen. I remember, I figured out how to do this. You push, you don't push home. It's not that button, obviously, that's the direct two button. So, number one, five, 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 you number three for the uh, uh, arrival, turn right heading one, nine, oh, five. Uh, number three for London, and uh, turn right one, nine, five, and one, nine, five, five. Push center knob on the GTN 7, 650. Um, it could be. No. Oh, could be. Ah, there you go. Let's turn that volume down. That's the squelch knob, though. No, that's not. That's not what we need. Ooh. Oh, hello. Oh no, that's just turbulence. It's nothing I did. Okay. Um, yeah, I did push the middle of the small knob, but that's not mouse wheel button. No. Right heading two one zero degrees. Okay, then one seven five negative turn right heading three five zero degrees. Okay, three five zero degrees, sorry about that. Okay, seven five descend to altitude two thousand feet. Continuing to altitude two thousand feet, turn one seven five. Uh, 
The only way I ever remember doing this is actually going here, turning off the GTN, uh, GTN panels to get back the default, and then I could tune Nav 2. But I don't want to do that, because I want to figure this out. If I just go like that... Uh, There you go. Oh, it still does work. Ah. Yeah. That should have done it, yeah. No! Changing everything and it's not not it just changed everything except com one. Contacting the tower on one one nine decimal four five zero. Goodbye. Strange. Hello, Jorklin. Good to see you. We're just trying to figure out uh, um, an enunciator issue. Looks like this might be the ATC boundary. He should have handed me off by now. <coughs> Can't be the com radios, no. So, I'm going to give myself... Um, in COM1 standby, it's, uh, London South, I think, 132.6. And I think that might be the guy he's handing me off to next. If I go to Vatsim, actually, oh no, who's this guy here? This is 12607. West, yeah, 12607. That's who I'm actually going to be talking to. 12607. That's my standby. Uh, hopefully, one step closer to being a controller today. God help us all. Go for the full mic, Jersey. Are you able to make flight level 100 um, to remain in control of space? Uh, yeah. If you remain a flight level 80, uh, you'll leave control of space and it'll be big confliction service. I can climb up to uh, flight level 100 for Golf Uniform Mike. Golf Uniform Mike, would you climb flight level 100? A firm uh, Golf Uniform Mike. There we go.
See, I could set COM1 or COM2 to NAV1 or NAV2, or even the DMEs in the ADF, and that's what would give me this tone, but that's not happening. Playback controls. There's a lot of stuff in the GTN 750i still don't know how to use, even though it's that intuitive. Turn ident off, bro. Where have I got ident on? Oh, as in... I don't have ident on. How do I have ident on? Enable ES? How do I have I how is that mode is on alt thousand feet to go yeah more cabin heat yeah I completely agree the Morse code ident yeah He should hand me off to the new ATC fairly soon. Yeah, I'm on that line. <coughs> Clicking that button makes me, me squawk ident. Every time I click that button, he's getting the, the squawk ident. He's probably wondering what on earth I'm doing. Mode is on. I could go to altitude reporting. Although this one, I believe, is the one that's actually giving him the correct... It, oh, I see. This one is on R. This one is flashing R. Not sure how I'm supposed to get rid of that, though. Hang on a second. That one is as well. If I go altitude reporting... Go to your radio panel on the aircraft once more, please. Let's just pull that up as well. Okay, we've reached 10,000. And he's going to hand us over very soon. Yeah, I can see that. Intercom. Okay, I'm going to pull the throttle back to uh, go back to twenty five hundred RPM. Flashing R means you're reporting to ATC. Okay, that's fine. That's fine then. Reporting my altitude to ATC. That's fine. Um, I'm on the frequency. I'm squawk mode Charlie. 
settings. Over to 12607 for Golf Uniform Mike, thanks. Uh, not where you tune the radios, but where you would select if you talk on COM1 or COM2. There should be another audio channel selector for NAV at aid identification. Okay, let me just go over to... Um, London Control Golf Alpha Zulu Uniform Mike with you flight level one zero zero inbound scary. Just wait for him to call me back. Did he get me? Golf Alpha Zulu Uniform Mike on the control. Hello, Cardiff Free Delta arrival expect from me one two. Cardiff 3, Delta arrival and expect runway 1, 2, Golf, uh, uniform Mike. Cool. <clears throat> right, okay, let's go back here. Audio panel. And then uh, split mode. And then you were saying down here? No. I'm going to put that back to com. No. Not split mode. Not where you tune the radios, but where you would select if you talked on COM1 and COM2. Oh! This panel here. Yeah. It's not it's not got anything lit up. And I'm pretty sure it's not got anything lit up because it it would it would have COM1 and COM2 lit up if the GTN 750 wasn't present in the aircraft. I feel like that that is basically this. And that's defunct now that I'm using this in the 750. As far as I know. No, there's not really anything that I can get there. That's... I had an issue in the A2A where the lights did not show in the GTN 650, but they still worked. Issue resolved on reloading the aircraft. Oh, okay. One thing I did do, one thing I did do is I loaded up the, 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 the T6 in the sim and then I changed the aircraft to the Cessna 172. Maybe one of the volume controls. Yeah, I... I might just turn that down. I don't want to turn, no, I don't want to turn that down and then have no... Let's turn that all the way up and see what that happens. See what that does. That's not affecting the the tone whenever I'm changing that com. That's that's the uh, actual frequency volume. I don't really want to mess around with that, so I'm going to leave that about 45 percent. Push marker on the audio panel. 
Mark a mute. Those are not click spots. Those are not click spots. Um, I'm not even able to 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 tweak that. In the audio panel in 750, bottom left. Oh. That's turning it on, though, surely. Mark of volume. Oh! Nope, still there. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. No. Pull up. No. Pull up. What have I done? Pull up. Oh, I hate that voice. Speaker volume. That's zero. Cabin speaker. High sense. I don't want to hit that 3D audio. Push push nav 1 or nav 2. No. Thankfully, it's not like a really loud noise. It's not obnoxious to me. It's just there in the background. So I could deal with this the whole flight. I don't really mind. Um, at this point, like it's not like the pull up lady. Hey Bradley, good to see you. Okay, it is still here. Um, every now and then I think, is it gone? Is it gone? And then it comes back. Anyway. I'm having a nice flight. Not, u not usual that I sit up at 10,000, but um, I've done this in real life before. I've, I've sat in a 172 at 10,000 feet for about 45 to 50 minutes um, in Norway. And if you have a, a bottle of water in the aircraft and you, you drink from it on the ground and you screw it shut and then you fly up to 10,000 feet, the whole bottle is just like like caved in because of the pressure difference. And then whenever you uh, open it up at 10,000 feet, take a swig, uh, screw it back up and then as you descend back down to ground level the bottle will expand slightly and you you open the cap and it's like um, must be the must be a bug the GTN turned on the sound in the aircraft but the GTN doesn't know it's on yeah try pushing nav one da, 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 da. yeah um what I could do guys is I could hit this button here to turn off the GTN 750 and the 650 and it will give me back my my classic uh, common uh, nav stacks and I could try and tweak it from there but I don't know if I should do that because then it might delete my whole flight plan and everything that's in the 750 and 650 I'm, I'm not sure that I want to do that uh, what were you going to say about icing the real yeah okay so icing obviously on the leading edges you don't have any any ice boots or de-ices or anything it's a, it's a 172 like you just don't have that so um, ice will build up on the airframe, um, but so you have to fly in such a way as to um, see if I remember how how to put it really. But you basically just have to fly carefully so that if if ice does build up, you can cruise above the clouds where it's dry and ice isn't continuing to build up. So basically, just don't continuously fly through clouds below freezing. Like, I'm okay right now because I'm flying above the moisture, even though the temperature is below zero. So as I descend through the clouds, yeah, I'll pick up some ice. But that will only be very t quite temporary ice because as I continue to descend, I'm con 
I'm descending down into warmer air, and then that will break off. That will shear off quite quickly. But it's the whole idea of like, um, and this will degrade your efficiency as well. But um, you need to be careful not to, not to, not to gain ice on the airframe and continually fly like that for a long period of time, or um, get into a situation where you are continually gaining ice and not being able to shear it off. You need to be able to, uh, you'd have to then descend to warmer air and then have that melt off uh, and r probably restart the process or something, depending. Uh, did the airspeed drop? Um, so the airspeed didn't drop when I went through the clouds, as far as I know, when I was rising. My RPM is 2400. Um, and I'm sitting just below. Uh, so I am a little bit slow, actually. Yeah, let's just let's just bring the throttle all the way forward, just to see what that does. Yeah, speed jumps up. Speed jumps up. That's no problem. Getting a bit low on the fuel there, though. Let's just double check what uh, range is. Two hundred thirty-five nautical miles, and from here we've got we've got about half that to run so that's no problem but I should refuel when I get on the ground yeah that noise is annoying there's I'm pretty sure it's the nav 1 or nav 2 we'll sort it out on the ground we'll sort out this audio issue on the ground don't worry about it I haven't heard ATC for a while, but I am on the frequency. Let's just double check my auto panel. Yeah, I am on COM1 and COM2, so... one twenty six zero seven. Yeah, London West. I should be okay. Um, I think the issue is caused by switching aircraft. Yeah, probably something like that. Okay, so we're in cruise. Let's uh, start setting up for the arrival. The arrival he gave us was runway 12, uh, which is the uh, Cardiff 3 Delta, which is that one there. From there, uh, runway, all runways. Okay, that's fine. Load the arrival. Okay, so from BHD, we've loaded in the the star that he's given. And then, of course, we'll probably get vectoring or something to the ILS uh, further on from Exmoor. Okay, I'm just going to go use the bathroom in cruise. And... Uh, Not, I've not gone to make tea, but I just use it anyway. So I'm going to be back in a minute.
It's still raining outside. Yeah, so we're going to start thinking about descending. Not not right now, but at some point soon. Probably as we cross over Exmouth or something. Mm. Yeah, he's given us runway 1-2, which is... Uh, Which is that approach there. Oh, I gotta take my T T sign off. There you go. There we go. Oh, it's good to it's good to be on a nice stream like this. I've not heard him in a long while, but then there may not be very many aircraft in his sector. Well there are some. I'm just going to do a radio check. I haven't heard anyone for a long time. Uh, London Control Golf uh, Uniform Mike radio check. Golf Uniform Mike, London Control, we were to stress ties. Okay, thanks. Cool. I thought I was alone. No, I don't want to be alone. Um. That's the one I wanted. And there's the coast. With all that lovely autogen. <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello, autogen. Hello. Greetings. My narcissistic voice. Um. <clears throat> two two seven statute miles. Actually, what are we on? Uh, ooh, one hundred and ninety seven nautical miles on the fuel, and we have a hundred and. Wait, what? Okay, we've got like fifty nautical miles of fuel like left in the tanks when we want to touch down. So we're going to be a little bit close on the fuel. <laughs> we could, we could, you know what I'm going to do? I will just pull the engine back. I will pull the engine back because... And I will try to... Just lean out a bit more because... And that will improve. Yeah, 284 nautical miles now. So, we we weren't flying as efficiently as we could have. I'm going to try and go moving 702 purple and inbound ski 5100. 702 purple on the control, good morning. Bristol 2 Delta arrival, landing runway 090. Bristol 2 Delta, moving 702 purple. Although that brings our, our airspeed down. Quite significantly, but we are—we've got a, a hundred knot ground speed. Like, I finally got the Constellation. Oh, nice, Jorkland. It's a nice aircraft. It's a nice aircraft. I'm really looking forward to the. Uh, obviously, I always say this, of course. It's got a—it's a standard on my stream at this point. But I'm really looking forward to the the 377 in P3D version four. But I'm having a feeling they'll PBR the whole thing and everything. It'll be really nice. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm looking forward to—I mean, everything. A2A is going to be doing, but uh, the Cub in PR, PBR, the uh, I'm not really a big fan of the, uh, the the Warbirds because I'd rather fly Warbirds where in a simulator platform where it's actually set up for combat flying. So I'm not a really a big fan of Warbirds in in P3D. So I'm afraid. I mean that it gives me good appreciation for an in in depth sim like the Spitfire. If I fly the Spitfire in P3D. It's a lot more detailed than the Spitfire in Nile 2, for instance, so it's, that helps to learn the systems in, a, in greater detail. But in terms of like most of my combat flying, I'd be doing in Nile 2 anyway. Really looking forward to their first 
uh, GA twin. That's going to be huge. Really looking forward to that. And then the Cub, of course, and the um, and the uh, the Cub and uh, the B17. Yeah, we're down to 90 knots now. I'm not quite sure about that. And now we're going through more icing. I'm going to bring that back up to 75% uh, on the power, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the 377 will be nice. It's so long since I've flown the 377. And I remember regularly, regularly, the, the 377 engine issues were just constantly an issue. You've been enjoying DCS. Jorkland, you must come join my, my uh, Discord and we should fly DCS together. Do you fly the, uh, the F-14 in DCS, by the way? I'm in need of a, of, a, of a buddy to fly the F-14 with. <clears throat> wow, it's already midday. That's crazy. Should go and get some lunch. It's annoying when there's like things that you want to do on your weekend, but it's raining and drizzling outside, and then you've got a cold, so I can't do any audio narration and other things, other projects. Um, I could today. I could do some uh, the Vigan. You fly the Vigan, okay? Just the Vigan, right? Um, I would recommend the F-14, man, if you would like to fly with multiplayer with some teammates. Um, I'd be very, very happy to fly the F-14 with you. Um, if you want to learn the, the Rio uh, radar intercept officer position, or if you want to fly as the pilot and I could learn the Rio, um, I'd be very happy for to do that with people on my Discord channel. Um, so if you think about it, um, let me know. Um, uh, just, just, just sign up. So sign into my Discord channel anyway, just to be part of the community. See, we've got a few people. We've got Roxon uh, Vitus, who is the um, the developer for the uh, the Wings 42 um, Lockheed Vega, and then Perriot, a, a Frenchman, nice guy, and uh, we just have good chats. So um, and we get together and, and fly every now and then. Sometimes I'm flying with those guys when I'm not live streaming. So you know, if you want to be part of the community please feel free to if you want the discord um if you want the discord invite link just let me know and i'll put it in the chat so uh right so okay i'm i'm thinking i need to think about starting to descend well i'm only at ten thousand feet and this thing descends fairly well so maybe not maybe not uh i can do i can go to the uh utilities vcalc uh, oh, VNAV enabled. Oh, yeah. I've not learnt the VNAV capabilities of the. There was an update to this recently, and it, it they added v, VNAV um, capabilities, which I've not learnt to use yet. I should learn to do that on a stream. I think that would be good. So it's like if I. Oh, that's a nice shot. That's a nice shot. Uh, if I go to uh, the flight path and if I say okay at uh, not there if I want to say uh, EGFF and he gave me a Carter 3 Delta uh, so let's go to the stars uh, Carter 3 Delta arrival okay so uh, okay 3000 2700 okay so they want to people approach 2700 at uh, Say Exmoor. Exmoor uh, uh, needs to be 2,700. Call for uniform contact Cardiff Radar on 25 decimate 50. Goodbye. Over to Cardiff Radar 125 decimal 850 for Golf Uniform Mike. Thanks. Good afternoon. Uh, 125, 85. Well, uh, actually, we need to 
I'll get your link in a second then. Let me just contact him first. Carter Fredar, good afternoon. <coughs> Carter Fredar, good afternoon. Golf Alpha Zulu Uniform Mike with you, flight level 100 inbound from the south. Okay, cool. Uh, right, so. Okay, so. You can see the V calc has given me a top of descent. It's actually given me a top of descent. So you've got v VNAV on this thing now, which is crazy. So, that new codec can't come soon enough. I know, I, you, can you imagine how amazing this is going to be with the new codec? Uh, how do I? There you go, guys. Nice day for a flight. Look, and they've got me a glide slope coming in there as well for the, for the VNAV path. Okay, well, I'm heading 300 to see where I'm going on the one. Okay, well, I'm heading 300 now, uh, at least, uh, DCM 5000 feet, QNH, 107, 3, 5, 9, 1, 1. Carter, Freedom, good afternoon, Martin, uh, Spectre, Zyrus, from the, uh, Okay, so um this one two and if possible we'd like back before ILS approaches uh at one two a couple of times if it's not uh, too much problem. Yeah, oh there's a Concord. There's a Concord. No? Oh, there he is. Where is he going? London Heathrow to London Heathrow. He must have not set that up properly. I'm guessing he's on his way outbound to New York. He's 12,000 feet. I would have imagined. No, in fact, he, if he's on if he's on Cardiff radar, then he's coming into Cardiff. Altitude 
Oh, thank you, two zero zero, this is now two six hours of peak two dash one zero zero seven one two eight thank you. Speaker Concord one zero four D seven five eleven nine zero zero. Liner says Speaker Concord one zero four. He's going to be on. Speaker Line three one five D seven five eleven nine zero zero. He's going to be on. Uh, We're just watching the ground now. Speaker Line three one five. X plane. He's going to be flying the new X plane 11 Concorde. Really looking forward to the FS Labs Concorde, but there's far many more add-ons I'm waiting before before that one comes out. And uh, speed down to 250 knots now. I think I think learning to fly the Concorde proficiently on a, in a VATS a full ATC VATSIM environment is is uh, is what I could, would consider as the pinnacle of. A, of aeronautical accomplishment. We're going to have top of descent fairly soon. FS Labs A321. I'm looking forward to that. I really am looking forward to that. It really will complete the series. Although I, I need, I need a, a new graphics card before I can reliably fly these high, highly intensive FS Labs. Is it's. He's going to have to fit a Concorde and a Cessna onto that ILS. I don't envy him. I I mean, they'll probably all have landed long before I arrive, but um, still. That's got to be a sight. Yeah, I wish you could upgrade your GPU a little bit. Um, I I will eventually. I uh, it's just I don't have the money and uh, yeah, just saving up for it. Hopefully. Concord first, then you. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> that is an easy answer. Love the clouds. I, I do. I do. <coughs> Golf uniform Mike requesting descent. Descent fly level 70, Golf Uniform Mike. Can we find that morning, sir? Send me down to see Papa, fly level 100, just to take care of him. Send me down to see Papa, good afternoon, sir. Meeting fly level 100, sir. Traffic ahead. Okay, so we have the altitude armed, and we have the vertical speed is negative 500 feet per minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Should be good. Ooh. Oh, he's he's far above me now. Oh, he's three thousand feet above me now. Sorry about that. Two one just two one four.
thought I would have been able to see. Oh, there he is. Oh, there. Can you imagine Vatsim when we have the audio the audio codec update? <clears throat> Completely different environment. He's giving the Concord much longer, uh, a much longer approach there. And he's up at 7,000 feet still. When is the Vatsum codec update coming? Um, must be coming very soon now. But I've been saying that for like four months, four or five months now. Um, Last post was the 5th of May, and uh, you can go onto the VATSIM, you can read this, and uh, published blog. Discuss C it discusses CTAF and the way it's modeled, and uh, stuff like that. It's going to be really cool. It really will be very cool. It's just going to take them a bit of time. It's still taking them time. But when it arrives, it's going to be probably the best network available. Until until other things might come along, like um, POSCON and stuff like that. <coughs> hmm. As I'm Okay. The Concord. The Concord is doing a touch and go. Concord's doing a touch and go. Oh, lag spike. Hello, Friedrich. Good to see you. Good to see you, my man. And I see someone on Twitch. Hello, Twitch user. Greetings. That's a nice chill day today. Look at this. Lovely weather. Bit of clouds, a little bit of turbulence. Okay, Concord has cleared the ILS. Departure left hand circuit, altitude 2300 I know, lovely weather. Yep. Okay, flattening out at 7000. Okay. <laughs> I 
just want to put it up again. Okay, flattening it out at um, 7,000 feet. Okay. Of course, I would know who the Concorde pilot is. Didn't come through uh, in voice very well. <laughs> Lovely weather. I love the clouds. They're still, the lighting is still not right in P3D. They've never had the lighting right for a long time. If this was real world, you have a lot more contrast going on there. The sky would not look dark. The, that's dark, like gray-blue. That should be like a deep... Like, uh, the sky just doesn't look like that on a clear blue day. That looks like there's... That looks like... Like Indonesian smog. Like... That's, that's like South Korean Seoul. My, I fly my Concorde uh, to right now, and I'm over the ocean. Are you flying the Concorde right now, Friedrich? On on Vatsim or? We might actually see the Concorde. There he is. I mean, let's see if I can pull him up on the, uh, on a view. New view. Air traffic. Speedbird 104. Where are you? Huge bank of rain just, just uh, rolling. Yeah, I don't see speed ones or four. Oh no, actually, hang on. Oh really? Really, Vatsim? I just don't. I just don't. I'm sorry, Vatsim. Of all aircraft, and of the thousands of AI models that I have, why is the Concorde not able to be model matched? Ugh. Never flown it online, okay. Oh, I tell you. <coughs> Getting closer. Oh, Speedbird 104 is turning towards me, but I won't see him because he's a default A321. Like two, two thousand, oh, about three thousand AI models. Uh, say again for golf uniform, Mike. Uh, ILS is fine, uh, it's up to you. Uh, I know it's busy. A visual, a visual approach with a short base leg is no problem. Uh, we can do that for uh, Golf Uniform Mike. Golf Uniform Mike, thanks. Leave uh, Exmoor heading 350 degrees, descend altitude 4000 feet, QNH 1007. Leaving Exmoor uh, heading uh, 350 degrees, descend to, um, uh, could you say again the altitude, and that's uh, QNH 1007. 
4,000 feet uh, for Uniform Mike. Uh, 4,000 feet for Uniform Mike, thanks. I called it from Spirit of Mars, so 40 feet easier for you. Uh, we can revert to VFR, the weather is fine and stay in the traffic pattern is there. Spirit of Mars, call 104, no, it's uh, not a problem, it's just uh, trying to integrate a uh, light aircraft in between yourself and the 738. Uh, if you turn a right now, heading 320. Right 320, Spirit of Mars, so cool. Oh, don't porpoise on me like that. <clears throat> I call it still compliance. Before looking at our fuel figures, we can probably do three touch and goals possible, and then we need to go back to Easter. Still be one zero four, Roger. I'm going to be for the um, Bristol to be able to arrive. So we are on five. Papa, 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 good afternoon, Trev. Uh, Tony, you know, uh, we will expect to have had a descent near an expo. I have this. Two Papa contact and car uh, Bristol winner one two five decimal six five zero Papa. Okay, five decimal six five zero. Thanks so much, train. Two two. Skip the one zero four ten lightning zero nine or zero degrees cleared ILS approach from the one two. Right and see my circle I was approach from the one two still conk one and so forth. Okay. So. Uh, one zero tango Roger. Um then uh, one zero tango number two two eight concords currently turning a final from the uh south side. It's gonna get busy now. It's gonna be fun. Thousand to go. I'll sell. It's going to come from 104. Champions of Ryanair, the 737, uh, currently down in the visual circuit, not safe. They have a Boeing 737-800 in a visual circuit. Interesting. It's just, just in, just a standard day on Vatsim. Just standard. It's Ryanair. Just, just visual circuit. Just do a visual circuit. Yeah, yeah. You do that. With a Concorde doing touch and goes <laughs> at Cardiff. Oh, brilliant. Speed of Concorde one zero four. Feel the tire request for short approach. Speed of one zero four. Roger. Clear the visual approach from one two. Report final. Uh, Volatus, I was going to fly the T6 until I saw the weather and then realized the T6 in IFR. So I decided to fly the Cessna 172, so that's why I'm, you, you're seeing this now. So. Is it a VATSIM event, Jorkland? I didn't know. Well, I mean, it's not. It's not like fully staffed or anything. It's like staffed for a, oh, it's like weekend version of staffing, but it's not like that's fully staffed or anything. My goodness, that beep though. That's the Concorde. Oh, and I realize I need it. I'd really like to descend to like 3,000 feet, uh, 2,000 feet to get out of this cloud, but... Thanks. 
Just give a name for room 5 and very quick name to make two requesting or seven four requesting clearance back to Heathrow. That'll be the Ryanair behind him. I definitely do not have a visual right now. This is Particularly annoying. Descend 1,500 feet, Golf Uniform Mike. Have the traffic and we'll report right base behind the 737, uh, number 3, Golf Uniform Mike. Oh yes, down! Okay, off with the autopilot. And hopefully coming down through this mixture going rich. Oh, I have a lot of altitude. A lot of altitude to lose here. Okay, I'm on right base. Golf uniform Mike, right base, uh, z two three, correction, uh, one two. Golf uniform Mike, continue approach, uh, surface wind one seven zero degrees four knots. Continue approach, uh, Golf uniform Mike. My goodness, did you see? <laughs> did you see how quickly I slowed down there? Bang on fifteen hundred feet. That right there. That right there for the visual. That was that was that was smooth. Clear to land runway one two for golf uniform Mike. Ah, oh, just just perfect. Right. Speed coming down now. Let's bring the speed down and get the, some flaps. And don't want to linger on the on the active too long. I'll turn off to the right. I'm I'm imagining he'll tell me to turn off to the right. Let's get into flap flap speed here. Or actually, we could land with no flaps. It's not a big deal. Flaps one. 
Yeah, we would like to, if we were to VFR and stay in the pattern, to uh, <coughs> do a bit uh, tighter circuits if possible, so on so forth. Uh, Alpha 104, Roger. Uh, uh, switching to VFR, uh, report uh, final one two. Okay, switch to VFR and uh, we'll report final one one two, still on so forth. I want to just hang it down, mate. Right, one, one, two, Roger, extend, extend the wind that is the uh, Concorde on the right base for the one, two. Set the alley looking for the traffic run at one, two, attacker. Golf uniform, Mike, vacated, one, two. Well, Mike, thanks. Uh, continue taxi to the parking by hotel. Continue taxiing to parking by hotel. Golf uniform, Mike. Thanks. All right, that was that was so smooth. That was that was right. Okay, guys, the strobes off, the landing light off, taxi light on. Good morning, our very good afternoon again. Speedbird nine one seven four uh, maintenance. Uh, with Echo, Boeing 747, request clearance back to Heathrow, please. Speedway 9174, clear to Heathrow, Alvin 1, Bravo, departure, and a squawk. He looks like he's uh, had better days. Flaps up. Clear to level Heathrow, the Alvin 1, Bravo, report 0471, Speedway 9174. Cardiff has always been a really nice, uh, very scenic airport. The, the scenery has always been very well done here. Let's just not run off the taxiway here. Look at this, like two 747s. It's crazy. And there's someone glitched into the scenery there. I remember this the GA parking pad very well. It's uh, I've been here many a time through the years. Thank you very much for your And radar speed bed 9174, we are ready for startup. Speed bed 9174, uh, start approved. Speed bed 9174, thank you. Speed bed 9174, runway 12, clear touching road surface, 170 degrees, 4 knots. Only one to clear touch and go, still on support, Uncle Phil, clear then Patrick. Here he is. Speed 104, uh, if I'm uh, clear on uh, right hand visual circuits, uh, not above altitude 3,000 feet. Clear right hand Patrick, not above 3,000 feet, so Concord, Uncle Phil. Alright, one to the tank, this is my old number 2 touch. Why can't? Why can't I see that as an actual Concord? <coughs> <coughs> But look at the amount of flare a Concorde needs. Look how much flare a Concorde needs. And off he goes again. What are they both doing over there? I don't know. Anyway. Thank you very much, guys, for coming and joining. Uh, it's been a lovely flight. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to turn off this h horrible racket now. Turn off my lights. Pito heat. Okay, bringing the throttle right out.
and then slowly reducing mixture to idle and the prop once the prop stops turning turn the beacon light off once the prop has stopped turning then turn the ignition off there we go and uh, we should have batteries off as well thank you very much guys for watching and joining uh, I've had a fantastic time really enjoyed that flight um, Looking forward to seeing how people enjoy that one as well. Uh, what's the name of this game? Hey, Janny. The name of this game is Lockheed Martin's Prepared 3D version 4.5. So it, the, short the short name is P3D version 4.5. That's the, that's the flight simulator. That's the name of the flight simulator. And uh, I'm flying with all sorts of add-ons and, and upgrades and things uh, which don't come with the base, the base purchase. But... Um, um, that's that's what I'm flying. That's the sim platform that's being used here. P3D version 4.5. Boom! That was a bit of a, a, a smoky touchdown there. He did kind of plonk that down. But then it's Ryanair. I mean, they have a reputation to maintain, so um, that's always expected. Um, thank you so much, guys, for joining. I, like I said, that was a really fun little pocket rocket IFR trip up from uh, Jersey this morning. Some uh, some pretty cloudy uh, cloudy weather and um, interesting traffic, unique traffic. Got that weird little GA bizjet thing uh, at Jersey. Oh, it's it's so sad that the most exotic aircraft on VATSIM are most often just default A321s, you know. Um, but there we go. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Um, I will clock out now. I would like to do some uh, combat flying in aisle two, maybe later today. I'm not sure. I'm going to go out this evening, but uh, so I may not be able to get any more live streaming done. But if anyone wants to join me in my Discord channel, uh, you may do so, and then you know we can always hang out together and do some online flying and multiplayer on either DCS or aisle two or um, or P3D. So um, feel free to. Uh, if you scroll up in the YouTube comments, you'll find the um, the uh, the Discord chat, uh, the Discord uh, invite link. So, thank you very much for that, guys. Like I said, I'm gonna leave you now and um, see you later. So, bye.